We're going to look at Romans chapter 6. Now, I want everybody to pay attention to this part and to mark it down. The best chapter to claim victory in your life is when you apply Romans chapter 6. If you don't know Romans chapter 6 and you're struggling with something, you better know now. And then years of the future, if you're still struggling with something, I'm going to ask you what, what's the book and chapter that gives you victory. And if you don't know this, that, then I know you haven't been applying. All right, so Romans chapter 6 is the most important chapter to claim victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. So first of all, you'll notice right here there are people held in bondage of sin. But within bondage of sin, you can always claim victory. And Paul, he gives you three amazing secrets to be free from the bondage of sin. Let's look at Romans chapter 6. We're going to look at verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Well, you have a drug addiction problem. You have a drinking problem. You have all kinds of problems and addictions and sins in your life that you're struggling with. But God says that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. When you what? No. No. So that's the first thing is to know. Know what, preacher? Know that your body is dead. You might say, why is that, preacher? Go to the book of Colossians. Go to the book of Colossians. We're going to look at Colossians chapter 2. And keep your hand on Romans 6 because we will always go back here. Go to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Notice what the Word of God says right here. Because, remember this, the real you is not your body. So this body that's uh, bogged down in drug addiction, in sexual addiction, in all kinds of addictions in life, television, uh, video game addictions, you got to realize this. This body is not, is absolutely not the real you. You got to understand that. So when this body craves and cries out for more sin, you got to remember this. That's not you crying out for more sin. This thing is a dead animal right here. We're going to look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 11. In whom also ye are circumcised. Circumci circumcision, it means a bodily cutting off. Okay, which part of the body are we cut off from? That's the question. Keep reading with the circumcision made without hands. Okay, so this is a spiritual, not a physical circumcision then. Let's keep reading. In putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. So this spiritual circumcision, what it did is that it separated, it circumcised which part of your body? It's your whole body of sins. This is the doctrine of spiritual circumcision. Spiritual circumcision, what's going on then is that this is you. And in your case right here, you got to realize this. This black part is you. It's your spiritual nature. That's the real you, your spiritual nature. The outward part where it cries out for more sin is your fleshy nature. And that part is not you. Now, let me ask you a simple question. Who's the real you, this guy or this guy? It's this guy, right? If it's this guy, this is the real you, then this is not the real you. And if this is not the real you, then this one which is crying out for drugs, that has to relate with TV, that has to relate with sex, that has to relate with uh, bad company, That has to relate with uh, any kinds of sins. Uh, music as well. That's definitely addicting. So we see right here that in all these cases right here, that this is a fleshy nature. If this is not the real you, then this is not real to you. This is not real. This is not real. This is not real. This is not real. This is not real to you. These parts are dead. You got to know that. They're dead. 
If you think that, oh, it's too hard, I can't take it anymore, why did you say, I can't take it anymore? Because you just admitted right there, I, the real you, is sex, is bad company. It's sins, it's drugs, it's TV, etc. You just believed in your head that the real you is made up for this. If you think that the real you is doomed and prone to be this, you will never get victory. You got to know, see, you got to know this is not you. If you would know that, then you can claim the victory at the first step there. The second step, let's go back to Romans 6. Romans 6. Now you got to reckon, reckon. So let's put number two here and reckon. So in other words, you got to apply it now, apply it. Okay, do you know you're dead? Now apply the death. If you know that you're dead, now you apply the death. Look at Romans chapter 6, verse 11. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So now what you have to do is apply it. Because think about it, folks. Do you, you see all those dead corpses in the cemeteries there. They can't smoke, they can't dance, they can't drink, they can't gamble, they cannot sin. You know why? Because they're dead. That's why some sinners who have a drinking problem, they'll never get victory over their sin until they're actually dead. And when they're actually dead and in their grave, they can't drink anymore after that cirrhosis in the liver. See, that's why the Lord, he can kill you early. If you're not going to make yourself dead, then the Lord will make you dead. And you don't want that. What you want is to make yourself dead. And if you will make yourself dead, then you can get victory over against these things. If you know you're dead, now make it dead. That's what you got to do. Apply yourself like a dead corpse. Look, look at yourself at the mirror and tell yourself you're a dead man. You're dead. When you're about to sin, look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself you're dead. Good. That's what you got to do. You're dead to me. You got to do that. You are dead to me. Let's also look at Romans chapter 6, verse 13. Chapter 6, verse 13. Now you got to yield. You've got to yield. Yield to what? Because remember, just because you know you're dead and you apply the death, you need something to replace it. That's a matter of fact in everyday life. You can't just go on just rejecting, ignoring, rejecting, ignoring. You need something else to replace and fill in the void. So what you need is to yield to the spiritual nature. That's what you need to do to replace it. It's very powerful. Look at the book of Romans chapter 6, and we will read verse 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto who? God, as those that are, notice, alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Look at that right there. You yield yourself to something alive. Now, here's the thing. You've yielded yourself too many times to something dead. Right. Now, why don't you yield yourself to something alive? Who's alive, the spiritual nature or your fleshy nature? It's a spiritual nature, right? So that, since this thing is living, why don't you live in it? Do you know how many deadbeat Christians we got? Because they want to make this guy dead, and they want to make this guy alive. And that's why they mess up their lives and sin completely. You got to realize this. You got the power of the Holy Spirit in you. You got the third member of the Trinity in you. That kind of power should not go to waste. You should start using it to your advantage. Let's look at Galatians 5. Galatians 5. Well, how do I overcome... My sexual addiction. How do I overcome my smoking addiction? How do I overcome my video game addiction? How do I overcome my online chatting addiction? How do I overcome, look at Galatians 5. Galatians chapter 5. Notice what the Bible says at verse 16. All you have to do is that when you yield to this guy, then you're not going to fulfill this guy. That's what happens. Galatians chapter 5. And verse 16, this I say then, walk in the Spirit. If you walk in the Spirit, what happens? 
and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Right. Oh, pastor, I messed up in sin again. I feel depressed, blowing my brains out. I'm going to ask you, did you read your Bible? When's the last time you read your Bible? Yeah. I'm going to ask you, when's the last time you prayed? I'm going to ask you, you know, I haven't seen you in church for a long time. Maybe that could explain why. See, that's the thing right here is that you got to replace it with spiritual activities. If you don't replace it with spiritual activities, you're always going to mess up in sin. And don't blame God. Don't blame me. Don't blame your brother and sister in Christ. Don't blame the devil. Don't blame sin. You got no one to blame but yourself. Amen. But look at Ephesians. Ephesians even saw this importance. Look at the book of Ephesians. Chapter 4, chapter 4. And then look at verse 23, verse 23, uh, verse 22, actually, verse 22. Ephesians 4, 22 through 29 is a very powerful passage showing what you got to do. So you know you're dead. Now you make it dead. Now you replace it with something spiritual. Don't just keep rejecting what you put in your mouth and the people you hang around with. If you haven't came to church for weeks and months, if you haven't done soul winning for a long time, if you haven't read your Bible for a long time, then you will go back to sin. I promise you that much. You will never win victory in Jesus Christ. You have to do number three. If you'll never do number three, then you'll never get victory. Look at Ephesians 4, 22. That he put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. So there you go. You got one and two, putting off the old man. But it doesn't stop right there. Verse 23, and, and. Continuing, be renewed in the what? Spirit of your mind. See that? Walk in the spirit. Now keep reading. Verse 25, wherefore putting away lying and replace it with what? Speak every man truth with his neighbor. Look at that. So, oh, I have a lying problem. Then replace it with truth now. Let's read verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Oh, I have a stealing habit. Well then, get a job. See, at verse, that's what verse 28 says. Verse 28 says, get a job. See, you have to replace, you got to replace it with something good. good. That way you don't get yourself, you don't have so much time in your hands uh -huh. to figure out ways to steal. You're so busy with work that you don't have time to steal. Verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Oh, I have a cussing problem, Pastor. I take God's name in vain too many times. Well, why don't you replace it with good conversation with God's name this time? Oh, I have a worldly music addiction, Pastor. Why don't you replace it with him singing then? Amen. Oh, I have a problem with hanging around with bad company, Pastor. Well, why don't you come to church and hang around good Amen. company then? Did you guys feel like sinning at summer camp when you were running the bases and shouting and then glorifying Jesus Christ? Did you feel like sinning after that? What happened? That melted completely away, right? Do you know why? You completely made these things dead and you made this even more lively than before. And that's what you need to do. You need to put heart, soul, mind, body, everything into the Bible reading, into the prayer, into church attendance, into hymn singing. And if you do those spiritual things like a job, like a work in dreariness, there's, it's no wonder you go back to this guy. You got to make this alive to you, yield to it.